pause for a second, you want to do some Linux gaming, which is a great thing to do at the moment because more and more games are now supported on Linux. But let's suppose for a second you don't have a high-end gaming PC capable of running Doom Eternal and other new games, and instead, this is your gaming machine. The ThinkPad X220. Well, what are you to do? In this video, I'm going to show what kind of games this thing can run and how it can run them. Right now, on Linux Lounge. So indeed, this is the ThinkPad X220, a low-end laptop by today's standards, but in 2011 it was pretty great. And in fact, it still is pretty great. It's very well supported by Linux, and even by today's standards, it's a good laptop. However, it's not a gaming laptop by any means, but as I'm about to show you, it can absolutely run some games, although the specs really aren't made for gaming at all. The specifications of this laptop are a Intel i5-2520M, which is a dual-core Sandy Bridge CPU clocked at 2.50GHz. Uh, this machine also has 6GB of RAM, which I upgraded from the original 4GB, and an SSD which I upgraded from the HDD. Finally, the most important thing for a gaming machine is the GPU, and this laptop has the Intel HD Graphics 3000 integrated GPU, uh, which was never intended for gaming and certainly is not for modern or high-end gaming. Though, as we're about to see, it's quite impressive what it actually can do. Also, if it matters to anyone, this laptop is running Solus OS 4.1. So with the specs out of the way, let's see what this laptop can do. So for our first game, I wanted to try some emulation. Now first, I want to say I don't condone piracy at all, and I ran this test using a ROM that I copied straight from my legally owned disk, as well as emulated BIOS as I don't have a BIOS dump handy. So with that said, let's talk about what I did. I set the emulator to run using the fast graphics settings with a resolution of 1366 by 768 which is the native resolution for this laptop and a frame rate cap of 60fps. I also set it to use the simulated BIOS as I do not have a BIOS file handy. I then fired up my copy of Crash 3 Warped which is an amazing game by the way and it seemed to work in a reasonably playable way though it did seem to be stuttering a little bit. Although. According to the emulator, the game was in fact running at 60fps. Regardless of that though, I'd still say this game is totally playable, and if you want to play some PlayStation games, and you have a low-end Linux machine, that's totally doable. In fact, I think they'd probably run perfectly if you had a proper BIOS. Um, as well as that, I imagine you could probably emulate most low-end systems, so that's fantastic and gives you access to a very large library of games. So. With emulation out of the way, let's try playing some Linux native games. So to start us off with playing some Linux native games, I thought I'd try something that's representative of 2D indie games, especially older 2D indie games, and maybe even some AAA 2D games. And the game I decided to try is, as you can see on your screen now, is Super Meat Boy. It's a fun indie game that'll give you hours of fun, and you can run it right here on the ThinkPad X220. It runs at a full 60 FPS, not dropping anywhere, and I'm running the game at native 1366 by 768 resolution. I also tried World of Goo, and it worked perfectly too. So it's safe to assume that if you sort of like older 2D indie games, maybe even some newer ones, you have quite a large library that you can play on your low-end Linux machine. Although I would certainly recommend getting a controller to play them as the keyboard on the ThinkPad X220 is really not meant for gaming at all. And for our next game we have a 3D game and I'm actually surprised how well this one runs. Uh, the game in question is Rocket League. Sadly, it's no longer supported on Linux, so if you want to run the game natively, you'll have to stick with single player or attempt to run the game in Proton. However, that said, I downloaded the native version of Rocket League, set all the settings to the lowest that they will go, and set the resolution to 1366 by 768 and I went ahead and started a single player game. The game doesn't look all that good at these low settings, but I did see a reliably playable frame rate of 20 to 25 FPS, 
which is nothing amazing and I wouldn't recommend playing this competitively on this machine, but it is still totally playable, assuming you get a controller. I also tried turning the resolution down as low as it'll go to see what would happen, and I did in fact see a slight increase of FPS that sometimes even got to 30 FPS, so it is cool that you can get a higher FPS if you want. With that said, if you have a low-end laptop, I would totally recommend trying out Rocket League and other low-end 3D games if that's your sort of thing. Uh, in fact, if your laptop is higher end than mine, you might even get a solid 30 FPS doing so. Uh, but with that said, let's talk about another game. So next up we have a very different sort of driving game, and it's another native Linux game as well, and it's one that seems very popular in certain circles of the Linux community, and that game is Euro Truck Simulator 2. Now I admit to not really knowing how to play it, but I went ahead and launched it, and like the previous games, I turned all the settings down as low as they'll go, and I set the resolution to 1366 by 768 and the scaling down to 25%. And I then started up the game, and sure enough, it worked really well. And it actually didn't look too bad, all things considered. And that's something I've always liked about Euro Truck Simulator. You can run it on pretty much everything, and it'll look pretty good. So even on a low-end Linux laptop, it looks good. Um, so with that said, if you want to play some Euro Truck Simulator 2, or maybe some American Truck Simulator, or perhaps even the original Euro Truck Simulator on a low-end Linux laptop, then it's going to work completely fine. And for our next test, I decided to try out some games in Wine and Proton to see how well those work. Since theoretically this laptop can run Wine, then surely it can run hundreds of other classic Windows games. So I decided to download an official Proton support game, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and see how well it would work. I set the settings to medium for a good balance of performance and visuals, and started the game. And sure enough, I saw a kind of all over the place FPS in between 20 to 40, although it was definitely still playable. And, you know, it's, I imagine if you turn the settings down a bit more, you could easily get more than that. But I suppose it isn't really surprising, considering Battlefront 2 is quite old. However, it's still very enjoyable, and shows that Proton is very much usable on low-end machines. So you can use it to run pretty much whatever Windows game you want. So, oh, for our second to last test, I decided to try something a bit different. I wanted to see what remote play was like, since last time I tried it, it wasn't really that great. It didn't look that great, and the input lag was huge. So, I fired up my gaming PC and used remote play to stream Alien Isolation to, uh, to my low-end laptop from my gaming PC, and much to my surprise, it worked perfectly with no delay. The only giveaway that the game wasn't running natively was the apparent sort of quality degradation caused by streaming, but I have no doubt it would be possible to get better results than what I got. But all in all, the game worked really well, and if you want to stream games from your higher end PC to your lower end Linux laptop, then it's absolutely an option and your games will look brilliant if you do. The only caveat, of course, is you have to be sort of on the same network, but pretty much any game you could want to play, you can stream it. And uh, now, of course, it wouldn't be Linux Lounge if we didn't look at an open source game for our last test. So I decided to ditch my Steam library and try out a bit of Super Tuxcar on this laptop. Now, Super Tuxcar is a free and open source game, so it's, you know, easy to get your hands on and it's great fun. Now, theoretically, this game should be able to run on a potato and I have, in fact, in the past been able to run it on a netbook. But in recent years, it has started to look very impressive. So I installed this game from my distro's repositories, set the graphics settings to the game's 3 preset, and disable blur, and set the resolution to 1366 by 768 which once again is this laptop's native resolution. And then I fired up a single player game, and it seemed to work really well, as it sort of hovered at about 30 FPS. However, I have no doubt you could get much higher than that if you set the settings lower, as this game can go very low. 
but the game really does look good when I set it to this preset, although anything higher than 3 makes the frame rate unplayable. So I think 3 is probably your best balance between FPS and visuals on the ThinkPad X220 anyway. So all in all, that was my low-end Linux gaming experiment. I can safely say that if you have a low-end laptop or other machine and happen to use Linux, you'll definitely have no shortage of games to play. In fact, I've only scratched the surface of fun low-end games that you can play, many of which, in fact, are still very popular and work perfectly on low-end devices. In fact, these games may even run better on Linux as there's less overhead and more ways to extract the most performance possible out of your device. So with that said, I do think it is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful to you. If you'd like to support the show, follow my link in the description and check out my channel on LBRY. LBRY being the freedom respecting YouTube alternative. If you're already on LBRY, thank you so much. If you want to support the show, consider leaving me a tip, it really does make a huge difference. But with that said, that's it for today's video, I will see you in the next one.